So how is the counseling job on the Samaritans going? No, 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 wait, wait. I got to clarify one thing. I'm not condoning suicide because, of course, that is illegal. You could get arrested for that. Somebody asked in the chat, actually, I, I, I think this is an interesting point. Um, they said, is suicide, and I, I'm sorry, it was ages ago, so I can't remember who it was, but thank you for the comment. They said, is suicide selfish? And I think it is very, very selfish. And let me explain before everyone shouts at me. I think it's very selfish because um, it, it almost always um, involves subsequent suffering of family, relatives, and friends. Um, so in that regard, yes, I can consider suicide to be a selfish act. Yeah, I'd also like to throw in something else, too. I mean, we've all had moments where we've experienced sudden, seemingly overwhelming grief. And, and if you respond to that sudden, seeming, seemingly overwhelming grief in, 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 by being overwhelmed by it to that point, then look what a cascade of suffering you've just caused. I know people who have died of suicide. I, I, I know one particular example, somebody who killed himself over a woman, of all things. You know, and we're talking about a young man who, had, had he just had enough friends around at the moment, probably could have gotten through that evening and then begun a recovery process, and then by this stage in his life would have a full family and a happy life and wouldn't even remember who that broad was so many years ago. But he removed himself from everybody's life because of that that incident, that that moment that he couldn't he couldn't bear his own emotions, and that's tragic. Yep, it's the ability to see over the horizon. It's easily said, but not always easily done. Alexander, was there another point because I do have other callers. I think you wanted to raise something about North Carolina. Uh, yes, I just wanted to know if you had anything to say about how North Carolina recently defined marriage as between a man and a woman. And caveating on that, uh, President Obama is recently coming out in support of gay marriage. That's I'm glad Obama Americans. finally... Aaron and Concordance. Aaron first yeah. and Concordance. I'm glad Obama finally said something worthwhile. You know, I'm, I'm glad somebody... That, that, that Obama actually said something that, that opposes... Uh, uh, all of the, the retardation that we deal with here in the southern United States in particularly. The bigotry has ruled here since this country was founded. I'm not just talking about the 50s or 60s. It has always been the case in the southern United States. And I don't, I don't foresee an end to it beyond direct opposition in the loudest possible sense. Concordance. Yeah, I really don't have much of a comment. Um, I think the government should probably get out of the whole marriage business altogether. In full, full stop. Yeah, I mean, I'm one who doesn't even believe in marriage, except for, like like Penn Jillette did. You know, he, he married his wife because of tax reasons. I mean, there are legal benefits to getting married. Otherwise, I would, I would just as equally support having nobody have any kind of a legal marriage at all as I would be to have everybody have a legal marriage. It's a, it's a game. It's a farce. It's an illusion. It doesn't actually exist. People, ex people are together because of their commitments to each other. It doesn't matter what their, what their sexual proclivities are. And it's, it's ridiculous for us to put all, these, all this litigation on top of it. The, the, the only thing that matters in a relationship is do you actually want to stay with your partner? And the, the only sort of metric that matters. Um, all the rest of it is just the social construct that goes with it, what happens with property, what happens with medical visiting rights, and so on. Yes. Um, and, you know, the, there is no particular reason, yet that typically all is bundled within marriage. And there's no particular reason. Yeah, I mean, that, that's not what makes um, relationships stable. Uh, yeah, I have to say something relationships else, too. Stable is the emotional commitment to these things. Well, that's what primarily what does it. Um, if I have any empathy for the gays on this matter, it, it is this. I mean, in you know, different states have different laws. And, and in the state that my daughter was born, because I was not married to her mother, my name did not get put on her birth certificate. What kind of a judgment is that? I have to have a legal wedding to have been the biological father? That, that doesn't even correlate. And yet, because my name is not on here, I now have to go through this, or I did have to years later, go through this paternity test of genetic proof to show that my name should have been on the birth certificate and was only not there because of some stupid law for some backward state. Arne brought up a really good point a short while ago in that marriage has benefits. 
certain tax benefits, joint life, sorry, joint life insurance, and being able to stay at each other's side in the hospital. Yes. One of the biggest problems I see. I'm sorry, I, I must interrupt you there because this is something that I have not been aware of. When you're saying the right to stay by their side in a hospital, what, yes. what are you referring to? Although I don't have first-hand experience of this, I am aware of that uh, married couples can stay by each other's side beyond normal visiting hours. But if the state sees you two at, not as married people but as complete strangers, then there's a point in which you have to go and you can't stay. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So, um, so it's med medical visiting rights, inheritance rights, and so on. Yeah, these are all things that usually are bundled together with stable relationships. Um, uh, and you don't get that benefit from the civil union kind of you know, uh, um, concession that the religious community is trying to offer you know, in their mediation dispute over, over people wanting gay rights, people wanting to have the right to stay by the bedside of their dying partner and so on. I don't understand why the hell is that a big deal to these people. I know a lot of religious people who argue that it is an offense against them that gays have the same right as married people because married is sacred. Well, I'm sorry, Betty Bowers on YouTube gave the best description ever of what marriage is in the Bible. It's wholly unsupported by the religious right. The religious right needs to shut the fuck up about the marriage idea. I think I need to shut the fuck up as well at times. Alex hadn't finished this point. I do apologize, Alex. Sorry. Um, yes, continuing off that, these are uh, one of the biggest problems, uh, hurdles that people are, the religious, that the religious community is bringing up over this gay marriage thing is to say that they need to protect the sanctity of marriage as if they hold a monopoly on the name, which is clearly wrong because the entire world marries and the Christians are only a third of the world. For the sake of government recognized marriages, the government is handing out those special benefits of marriage that we just listed. And for them to give it to some people, but not to others, is to definitively create a second class in America, yes. as if this is India or something. And I, I think don't article, think you're going to find too many objections to those sentiments on this panel. Article yeah, I want to welcome your statement, your, just your general sen your sentiments and your presentation to this show. Thank you. And I Likewise. think it's Amendment 14 or 16 of, our, of the U.S. Constitution that specifically states, although not in this exact wording, that America will not create a second-class citizenship. 